Ah, te voilà. C'est Maître Sega qui te parle. Tu es venu en vélo, tu veux jouer... C'est parti Déjà, ces gars, c'est plus fort que toi. Heureux, rédempteur et rédemptrice, et on continue à être dans Rapture. On cherche apparemment l'entrée d'une contrebande. Mais je vais tout vous prendre, prendre tout votre argent. Tout est à moi. Oula, le mec il tousse, il a le cancer. Il a un peu de mal. Ah, ils doivent être derrière, la porte est gelée. Ok. J'améliore une arme sans choisir laquelle, vite fait, en cliquant n'importe comment. C'est pas grave. Ok, bon. Je sais pas ce qu'il faut le pouvoir du feu. On remonte. On va échanger. Oui, mais je n'ai qu'à désir, c'est tout faire brûler actuellement. Bon, oh, allez, au pif, celui-là. Je déteste ces trucs où il n'y a que deux trucs. C'est pas possible. Là, le don de me, de me gaver. One of the biggest challenges a rational faced when developing Bioshock was bon, figuring out a way to retain the feeling of a deep RPG while making the game accessible to a broader yeah, console audience. Yeah. Ultimately, the team succeeded in creating an intricate system of weapon and character well, upgrades, balette, moi, giving the player choice and customization while keeping the gameplay fast, lean, and engaging. Bienvenue à Tout le monde veut votre peau. One of the hallmarks of Bioshock, to me at least, was that it, it really blended RPG and sort of first person action game together in a way that, you know, is sort of standard today, but a decade ago was, was really pretty revolutionary. And I know for the du team, jeu. I think at some point it became clear that you wanted this to work on. Je pense que je vous mettrai un commentaire. Du vote la timeline quand est-ce que c'est fini ce truc là. Um, so the idea of you know doing a 
console game and a PC, a PC game, and doing something that sort of felt like a shooter but had much more depth. And I know in, in some of the early design docs you talked about sort of creating an FPS plus versus an RPG light. What was the difference in your mind between those two? I think for us, is the game of the big difference between System Shock and Bioshock ended up being that System Shock was more about your character growth and Bioshock was more about the environment. Because with System Shock, we really didn't have System Shock 2. We didn't really have the either the art team to make enough assets or the visual power to sort of make a, comp a really convincing environment. But as we started working on Bioshock, the art team was so strong that the ability to tell stories Plus, voyez, the, nous notre notre jeu. the most important thing about the game. That, yeah, was sort of not spam, really but the game. that was not really a concept we had. But as we started building things, we could realize that the visual world was the star of this thing. The rapture was really the star of this thing. And telling the story outside of cutscenes, telling the story, the 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 discover the story rather than us telling him the story, telling him or her the story. And it was still very much for the time, oh, I think for the time, discours qui spoil le truc dans le jeu, putain. Of, there wasn't a lot of growth in shooters, so right. it was still, I think, for the time, very, very revolutionary. But I think System Shock 2 was even more ahead of its time in terms of, of that growth thing. Um, because we defocused a little bit primarily, part of it was to just figure out how to do that all on a console controller was, was very tricky. No, I remember even the early demos, people were like, you know, you see a plasma, you see like a upgraded weapon, people were like, oh, I've never seen that before in a shooter. And that was, you know, when you were coming out of the sort of, you know, the Quake, Doom, Half-Life, where it's like you have, you know, eight weapons on the keyboard and you sort of knew what they were and they weren't going to change. Yeah. Sean, was that something that, you know, from a, a sort of creative standpoint, standpoint, was it always clear that, that that was something you guys wanted to do or it okay. evolved over time mm -hmm. and you wanted to have more depth in the game? I mean, it certainly evolved ah, over okay. time and each you know, upgrade path was slightly, you know, had its own unique challenges. Like certainly animation. You had to design a base weapon that didn't feel like crap, still felt like something that you wanted to use, but then the ability to add the upgrades to, to that and each of the upgrades can come in any order. So you have to be aware that this, you know, parts A, B and C could come in at any different time to upgrade the weapon. In a first person shooter, that's your star. That's the thing that you're seeing all the time. When it comes to other things, plasmids, uh, Things that are, you know... Tonics. Tonics, yes, sorry. It's been a while. Come on, Sean. <laughs> I know, it's 10 years. Those things were more offloaded to machines that you would then have to interact with so you're not carrying the inventory around with you. But each, each of these decisions on you know, how we're going to upgrade the player, you know, it wasn't like a mouse and keyboard, okay, we can just use the mouse and you have all these buttons at your disposal. You could arbitrarily point at a part of the screen really yeah. easily, which you could do in System Shock too. Yeah, so we certainly, you know, learned trial by fire when we were trying to adapt these things to the console at the time. Yeah, and like having you know, different ammo types and stuff like that. Like We went through numerous, numerous iterations of the interface to make it, uh, like we had the first times when we sort of put the interface into play, it was very obtuse and very tricky to get your head around and we just kept working, quoi, ça, on it, working, on it and working on it because you want to feel like second nature. And, but that was, we, we spent a lot of time on that. What motivated the idea of having uh, so much truc, en fait. choice in the way you could sort of play through this game? What was it to you know give the player a, a better sense of authorship over the experience, or what, what, what was driving that? I've always liked the idea of giving the player a lot of agency in terms of their play style yeah. and experimenting with the play style and trying different things and seeing what worked and didn't work and interacting with the environment. The notion that it's sort of a playground that you get to play around with and, and imprint your own desire on was great because I think we were more skeptical about being able to do that with story at the time. In fact, so much to the point where that become almost like a joke, you know, that becomes the meta joke of the game of how little agency you have in, in, in your story. But agency in terms of how you play the experience and how you load out your weapons and how you interact with the environment, as compared to most shooters at the time where basically like you can shoot them with a the shotgun or shoot them with the, you know, the pistol. That was really important to us. So we spent a lot of time trying to make the game, the world react in a way that you would expect and hope it to react when you tried something. Right. And some of those system or decisions we made about systems fed back into the narrative, like locking Adam behind Big Daddy and the little sister, like you can't get Adam unless you deal with the Big Daddy, which then becomes a roving boss fight, which then becomes another system that 
I don't know if we planned that from the start or it was one of those happy, like, you know, serendipity, like, oh, this decision that we made about putting Adam behind the Big Daddy totally works because now we have a different type of boss fight that you hadn't really seen uh, actually, in other games. Actually, it was, it was the other way because what happened was is originally there was no concept of Adam and Big Daddy just had money and other treasure on them like every yeah. other splicer. Yeah. And they were so tough, nobody would ever fight them because why on earth would yeah. you go after that guy? Right, go off a bunch of small splicers and get the same amount, yeah. So we had to come up with a, a currency that was exclusive to them. Yeah. Because we knew that was where the fun was, right? But we also knew people were terrified of them and we didn't want to fight right. them. Yeah. So game, video game development and system development is a lot like economics, right? You know, in economics you try to encourage certain behaviors through tax, usually through tax policy. You know, well, you want business growth, so you lower taxes on, on certain segments of the business economy, or you want to encourage you know, people to move into this area, so you make incentives to move in here. We had to make an incentive for players to fight the big daddy, and Adam became that incentive. And then, once you had this Adam, then you had a new piece of narrative, which you they could then incorporate back into the story. Yeah. That old tasty Adam. Talk a bit about the the plasmids and the vending machines and that sort of whole approach to I guess what is kind of a tech tree, but you know, and, and coming from PC games, you know, used to strategy games and whatnot with very complicated ways of how you would upgrade things. I thought you guys did a, a really interest you had a really interesting approach to how you made it very accessible to a console audience. How did that evolve? Was like did you know the vending machines were gonna be there from the get go? We had vending machines in System Shock 2, so we were sort of lifting that, and I always thought that was a fun, um, it was a fun notion to, because it's a, it's a affordance that people already understand, you know, they see a machine, a vending machine, they know immediately, oh, that's where I buy stuff, right? Yeah. And you also then have to have a shopkeep. When we talked about wanting to make things, put limitations on ourselves so things felt fully believable, yeah. if we had a shopkeeper sitting there, you can't shoot him, he right. sits there, he doesn't say anything, and all of a sudden, he feels fake. Where a vending machine, the Circus of Values machine, can feel 100% authentic, yeah. you know, despite the fact that it's selling like ammo and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, which is. You but know, in an objectivist society where you don't have rules and regulations right. on you that type of thing, it, it feeds back into the narrative. But you don't then break the fiction at all by having these characters who sort of don't really live and breathe in the world. So the vending machines became an important part of that. But we still want to give them character, and hence the, you know, and so. That clown image came from a piece of, um, that image is actually from like a, a fruit container or something uh -huh. from like the 1940s. Okay. And uh, so we had a book of like royalty free images and I saw that image and I'm like, let's call, let's put that clown on and we'll call it Circus of Values. And then, you know, we wrote a line, some lines for it, decided he'd be this sort of asshole clown. And then, um, then we hired the best actor in the world uh -huh. to play that part. That was, that was me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I cost, the, my biggest advantage was I didn't cost anything. Um, I didn't know you were, really? I was a clown. Yeah. No, I was a clown. Um, I hear it in my head every night. Uh, my wife hates that voice. She <laughs> hates that voice. You can give us a little of it right here. Welcome to the Circus of Values. She does not allow me to do that, so oh, I, okay. I do it outside of the house. Okay. But it, it allowed us to, it allowed us to have something that felt very rich and very real while being very limited at the same time. And also, you know, the plasmids and sort of the motif of sort of the videos and how you explain sort of what a plasmid was, that was a really fun way, I thought, to sort of explain that. Sean, how did you guys evolve that? Because it was a very art Again, artistic I think, approach. I think those came on pretty late, too, because we, you know, we were developing all these systems and you make the assumptions because you're dealing with them every day that the player who gets this game is going to understand what these systems are. And you know, we always joke that you can't ship a developer with a game or you can't expect somebody to have a readme file for all of these things. Nobody's understanding what these plasmids are or how to use them. How do we present these to the audience in, in such a way that they're gonna understand what it is fictionally and what it is functionally? It feels Rob Waters did a lot of the, the animations on those. And we sit down and we, you know, write out like a little 30 second commercial of what this thing is. And again, because going back to the narrative, this is what would happen in Rapture. People are trying to sell these things, so they would come up with commercials to explain why you need this. Using that as, as your framework, you can then come up with all of these you know, little, little gags that people will remember to have a little personality to them, but I think ultimately in the end weren't that expensive. 
to, no, to we, create because they're cheap. I think the, one of the most important things about it is we sent, we, we didn't want them to be long and we didn't have a lot of budget for the arts. We have like a couple of frames of animation yeah. in them essentially. And so we had to figure out how do we message how this thing works in like that. And, and that's what marketing is, right? You know, it's how do you message what, how something works. And marketing and tutorializing are very similar things, right? You're trying to get a message across in a very brief period of time in a very snappy fashion. And I think that one of the things that I, I always felt about games is that tutorials are sort of death. And because they're usually like, you know, the, you go into a scene and there's like a, tra a shooting range or something like that. And you- Narratively, they never really make sense oh, either. And they're so boring. And so we always try to put a big burden on ourselves of, of how do we train people while not letting them know they're being trained. And brevity is really important to that. So we sort of, we had a bunch of art constraints on that, which also led to a bunch of writing constraints. And so those things were like, I don't even know if they were 30 seconds. Yeah, they were like really short. Seconds. Yeah, like 15 seconds long. But we had to explain a whole plasmid in that period of time. Yeah. And I think that was a good exercise because it also made the game, it forced us to be concise and to really explain what this thing was like that. Throw objects at foes. You can even catch grenades and throw them back. Bah putain les gens, ce truc a duré 10 minutes, c'est beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup trop long. Un petit film de réalisateur, l'idée est sympa de mettre des... des petits films comme ça dans le jeu. Mais franchement c'est beaucoup trop long. Ils auraient dû faire un truc qui dure 3 minutes, 4 minutes, en tout cas c'est quoi. Mais ça fait une dizaine de minutes, c'est beaucoup trop long. Donc comme j'ai dit en commentaire, je vous mettrai la taille même de la durée et de la fin. Comme ça vous pourrez zapper directement. Quand est-ce que vous voulez reprendre le jeu Et moi du coup j'en ai profité pour aller me chercher une bouteille d'eau Et épicer tout ça parce que c'était franchement c'était long C'est pas que c'était intéressant mais on a déjà vu tout ça sur plein d'autres jeux différents et... Là c'était trop long Est-ce qu'on va retrouver un solo Ceux qui bouffent. What the fuck? T'as des flashbacks maintenant de la guerre. Je suis devant la baie sous-marine, mais je ne peux pas entrer. J'ai besoin de vous. Mon dieu, je suis à moins de 100 mètres de ma famille. Pas mal pour l'instant. <coughs> Parfait. Et voilà. Bien, t'as réussi. Un petit 
t'écoute. On est venu ici en croyant faire partie de la grande chaîne de Ryan. Mais la sienne est en or et la nôtre plutôt du genre de celle qu'on traîne aux pieds Des avec chips. un gros boulet au bout. Il est là-haut, dans la forteresse polaque, en train de culbuter des mannequins. Nous, on patauge dans ce trou à vider du poisson. Avec Fontaine, on peut espérer mieux. Culbute des mannequins nous, savez, Mais il a jamais eu besoin de travailler. Il dit de le rejoindre à sa boîte de conditionnement à 11h. Je vais y aller avec des gars. On sait jamais. <rire> Ça pourrait empirer. Ouais, j'ai encore trop picolé, bordel de merde. C'est de la bonne rapture, on a de quoi picoler toute la journée. Actionnez l'interrupteur dans la cabine de contrôle et laissez-moi entrer. Je crois qu'il est grand temps de nous serrer la main et de faire connaissance. Là, euh, moi j'ai pas confiance. Hein. Petit café. Bien, je crois que la plaisanterie a assez duré. Et si vous appuyez sur ce bouton, vous allez comprendre ce que c'est que d'être vraiment mon ennemi. Parce que depuis le début, t'essaies de me buter, mais t'es pas mon ami, je suis pas ton ami. Non, tu fais ma gueule. Tu laisses tous les psychopathes de la ville faire tout ce qu'ils veulent, et puis moi, tu veux pas que je vous puisse sur un bouton. Il y a le bouton, il fait tout noir. Là. Vous avez fait sauter un fusible et je n'y vois rien dans cette cabine. Laissez-moi un instant et je vous sortirai de là. Bon, Ira, chérie, est-ce que tu m'entends Je viens me chercher. Tiens bon, encore une minute. Quoi, ouais, je ne le sens pas. Il fait ses sons. Si seulement votre ami pouvait lever les yeux, bah, vous pourriez le prévenir. Oh foiré N'importe quoi Plutôt que de rester là, à le regarder. Ouvre la porte, salaud Ils sont partout. Je ne peux pas les retenir, je dois m'en tirer. Sortez ma famille de là. Nous nous rencontrons dès que possible. Ah, t'as bouffé, hein Ça 
Oh my god Sortez, bordel de merde L'Irlandais obèse m'a proposé un marché. Je leur balance Fontaine et je peux me tirer d'ici. C'est pas compliqué. Mais comment savoir si ce gros lard n'est pas avec Fontaine Ils sont peut-être tous avec lui. Fontaine a de la dent et tout le monde en veut. Ryan est un beau parleur sapé comme un prince. Même ici, un idiot peut voir de quel côté le vent souffle. Incapable de construire. Oh, pas voulu vous se barrer. Bar en admiration devant les portes de Rome. Même l'air que vous respirez est évité de mon compte. Alors, respirez profondément pour vous souvenir plus tard de son coup. Allez à la frontière des collines volantes. Elle vous mènera tout droit au démon. Et alors, il sera temps pour lui de payer. Exactement, on va le faire payer cette enfoiré. Ouah, c'est quoi cette carte là Pas d'objectif actif, oh putain. On se promène, c'est ça Elle est à la station de métro. Ok, mettons un objectif. On dirait que des pauvres diables se mettent à voir des fantômes. <rire> des fantômes. Ryan dit que c'est un effet secondaire des plasmides. Les souvenirs ouais. d'un crétin sont transmis à un autre par la manipulation génétique. Des fuites, des cinglés, une rébellion. Et maintenant, des fantômes. La vie n'est-elle pas formidable, la rapture euh, Pas vraiment, pour le coup. Euh... Parce que moi aussi, je les vois, c'est putain de fantômes. Oula. Salut. 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 J'ai vécu l'épouvantail de Batman, c'est pas toi qui vas me faire chier, je te le dis. Wouah Il peut se taper sans culer Piège, ça pue le cul. Et où Voilà. On se fait plomber et on respecte. Truc pourri. Aujourd'hui. L'Arcadie n'était ouverte qu'aux clients payants. Ce type m'engage pour planter une forêt au fond de l'océan et il fait d'une promenade dans les bois un produit de luxe. Ryan m'a dit, un fermier ne doit-il ah, pas être de vendre sa nourriture Un potier n'a-t-il pas le droit de vivre de ses poteries J'ai essayé de discuter avec lui et je sais qu'il signe mes choses. La seule chose qui se pire qu'un hypocrite, c'est un hypocrite au chômage. de balle. J'ai 10. J'en ai quelques-unes. Je joue au pistolet un peu. Alors, elle 
got it too. qui manque. Là j'ai pas de quoi. Pas de munitions pour l'instant. Comment je peux m'en débarrasser Je peux rien prendre. Il faut des travaux dehors, j'espère que vous l'entendez pas trop micro. 
Je pas ce bout là. Sauvegarde. Et ce coup sont tous sur le dos retournés sur ma gueule. Bon, oui, c'est pareil. Hop, on me déplaire plus que ça. Il y a eu des pressions considérables pour la régulation du marché des plasmides. Il y a eu des effets secondaires, cécité, démence, mort. Mais. Sont là-bas, tout comme la gare des Batisphères. Ensuite, tout droit jusqu'à Ryan. Il y a longtemps, okay. j'ai acheté une forêt à la surface. Les parasites ont déclaré que c'était le pays de Dieu. Ouais. Et que je devais ouvrir un jardin public. Bah, dis de Dieu, voir un jardin public. Je n'ai rien à foutre, ta vie. Son admiration stupide d'un canopée et se figurer l'espace d'un instant. Être en non de putain de le cul de sac de merde Je l'ai revu en cendre. Ce n'est pas Dieu qui a planté les graines d'artérie. Oh non on est de la baise. Ouais non plus c'est même pas le même. Celui-là, c'est la plus facile. Point qu'il fasse monter. Oh, what the fuck. Non mais j'ai pas ce qu'il faut Il y a un foin qui va vers la droite Il n'a pas Oh bah cassos <rire> Oh merde Oh shit Keep 
C'est quoi ces piratages qui sont de plus en plus ouf quoi Bien chaud le jeu. C'est une petite sauvegarde. Et chante Maîtriser la flamme, maîtriser la brume. Il croit qu'ils sont touchés par la grâce des anciens dieux. <rire> Ce n'est qu'une bande de vieux étudiants qui prennent les platines pour le nectar des dieux. Okay, par là. Dès que nous sommes arrivés ici, ma chasse est mise à crier. Maman, maman, c'est quoi ça C'est quoi Je croyais qu'elle avait une sorte de crise et j'ai soudain compris. Les arbres, les arbres, elle n'en avait jamais vu. Elle les prenait pour des monstres. Oh, sa vie Nous avons peut-être tort de venir. Voilà. Fuck, 
fait j'ai beaucoup de soins. Tu m'envoies quelque chose en guise de reconnaissance, oui. oui. Est-ce que je suis C'est un peu trop haut pour que je puisse pirater, fichier. des caméras de sécurité, des tourelles sur l'anti-sécurité, modifier le système de... Ok. Les caméras et retardent leur réaction. Caméras de sécurité tourelles. les gens sur la place Apollo. J'ai demandé à Ariane comment il pouvait faire la tête chaude pour des innocents. Il m'a répondu... Innocents. Ils n'ont pas choisi de défendre Rapture, mais ont préféré s'acoquiner avec Atlas et ses bandits. Ce ne sont pas des innocents. Il y a les héros. Grégory, ne venez plus pleurnicher au sujet des forces du marché et ne vous attendez pas à ce que je punisse les Quoi, des gens qui font preuve d'initiative. Si les agissements de Fontaine vous déplaisent, je vous conseille de trouver un moyen de proposer un meilleur produit. 
Je m'en doute. Ça me fait mal. Point de chips. Mais ça sert à rien. Faire un piratage avec Oui bah oui moi je veux bien avoir des trucs mais bon je peux pas augmenter les nombres de slots là pour l'instant je sais pas comment on fait Ces païens cesseront-ils un jour de tout voler Les assistants en papier, les encriers, la mamélise, la solution de chlorophylle, même mes vieux numéros de National Geo. Pourquoi il y a un compte à bord Ils doivent en tapisser leurs horribles petits sanctuaires, pauvres malades. Euh, je me dépêche parce que comme il y a un compte à rebours, je sais pas s'il faut courir en fait. Julie, nous avions conclu un marché tous les deux, n'est-ce pas C'est pas Cet a changé de nom. Permettez-moi de vous lire ce qui est stipulé dans le corps. Monsieur Ryan Industries se réserve les droits exclusifs de création, d'utilisation et d'exploitation du lecteur de la Il a Ah, il a gaz Sans elle, nous retournons. Petite photo Chaque fois que nous gagnons 
quelques centimètres, Ryan de son côté commence à pas de géant. F4 sac, ah ouais je crois. Je massacre des arbres depuis 25 ans. D'abord à Berkeley dans les années 20, puis ceux des Japonais à Iwo Jima en 45, mais je n'en avais jamais rien de la mort. J'ai réussi. Maman va fabriquer son premier arbre. Je vais baptiser ma création Vecteur Lazare. Elle pourra peut-être remettre ma carrière sur les rails. sur les rails. Ok, j'imagine que c'est pour voir ça. Surtout, j'ai le lance-flamme maintenant. Bien ça. Code correct. What? Peut-être 5-7 du coup. Ça, c'est un 7. À quoi bon être un génie Ici, si les seuls qui apprécient vos travaux sont une bande de crétins génétiquement modifiés. J'ai déchiffré le vecteur. En tout cas, au moins à 99%. Il ne me manque plus qu'un bouton de Rosa Gallica pour étayer mes analyses. De l'eau distillée, un peu de chlorophylle et des enzymes d'Apis mellifera. Oui, vous m'avez bien entendu, mes chéris, de la bave d'abeille. De la bave d'abeille Alors, euh, vous avez un objectif multiple. Appuie sur la carte en anglais. Ok, les gens, mais on va s'arrêter là pour cet épisode. Je vous remercie d'avoir suivi. N'hésitez pas à mettre un petit pouce bleu, liker et partager. Je sais que l'épisode aura été plus long que d'habitude, à cause de la vidéo de présentation du jeu, la bande qu'on a trouvée. Je vous dis à la prochaine. Tchuss tout le monde